the joke. Rick, hold on, I can't see. Hold the funny. Hold the funny, Rick. Hold the funny. Don't don't waste any of this comedy gold. Comedy gold. We only have it when the lights are turned on and the camera's rolling. Other than that, we're boring as spit on the sidewalk of life. At least he is. A bunch of comments are like, we know. Welcome back to our stupid reaction video. It's I'm Corbin. I'm Funky. And you can follow us on Instagram and Twitter, Twitter for more juicy content. It's so juicy. Follow us on our official Patreon and on our official Twitter account. It's one of my favorite things about pigeons. What? They're funky, man. Everywhere they walk. So... Yeah, that's dumb. No, it's true. I love pigeons. No, I'm saying that. That sentence. Ah! Uh, your existence. <laughs> Ring the bell to be part of the notification squad. <gasps> Today! You rang that like a pigeon. We are doing a movie review. Was I supposed to watch a movie? Ah, oh, same joke as last time. Uh huh. Even funny. Is it about stand up comedy? Because if it is. I can't. Yes, shut up. And it is called Udan or Udan? <laughs> Udan. 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 I call it Udan. <laughs> I think that's a You see that movie Udan? <laughs> you don't see that film from India called Udan? <laughs> that's a good one. That one's a knee slapper. <laughs> Anyways, yes, finally watched it. We that film right there? Parenting 101. <laughs> oh yes, definitely. <laughs> uh, we actually watched the trailer for this over nine months ago. A, and that's all we're doing here. We're actually giving you a review based on our memory of that trailer from nine months ago. Read the synopsis for me. Expelled from his school, a 16-year-old boy returns home to his abusive and oppressive father. That sounds like a fun time for the whole family. <laughs> Especially the dad. Yeah. I thought uh, he was 17, by the way. Uh, directed by, uh, say his name. Let me move a little. There we go. So there's a little spelling. Ah. Uh, Vikram Mad... You just... Sorry. Away. Go on. Vic, Vikramaditya Motwani, who was a somebody on Queen as well, and somebody on Dev. Uh, it's not obviously the director. No, that was Sanjay Dibansali. Sanjay Dibansali. But also, this was written by the wonderful and talented Anirudh Kashyap, and produced as well. Yeah, so by... there's a collaboration of there was a, a trifecta of writers, wasn't it? Yes, and obviously we've heard a ton about this from either Stupid Babies, I did a poll, this won the poll, which yep. is why we uh, reviewed it. Also, the uh, that the 10 best f films of the past decade. Correct. I think that- What was his name? I don't remember his uh, name, but I, we, did, we reacted to I think his this list. Was, this was his number one of the past- Was it his number one? Decade, yeah. Ah. Of the past decade. More than To Whom 3, wasn't it? Yes. Crazy. <laughs> but, 100% spoiler review, came yeah. out in 2010, sorry. Yeah, so if you haven't seen it, go see it. Go see it, and then come back and hear our review. Uh, so we'll break it down into different groups, but... Yes, Rich. Uh, initial thoughts. Down. Initial thoughts. R. S. T. A. Q. Those are my initial... Yes. Now, initial thoughts on the oh, film. Oh, on the film! Yes. Um... Loved it. Yeah. Um... It was... There's pretty much not... There's not much to not like about this thing. It's yeah. just a really, really, um, really well-made film. Really well-made film. And also, a, like, a powerful... It, it's, it's, it's essentially a coming-of-age story. Very much. But a very, I'd say, unique coming-of-age story, because it's not like... Coming-of-age stories usually have to, you know, finding, finding love, finding stuff. This is right. about finding his own person and getting away from his abusive... Correct. Father. Yeah, in fact, I can't even find or think of a parallel film um, comparable to it. Not that I need to. I just, uh, it's definitely a coming of age film. Mm -hmm. It's definitely touching on a subject that's a big deal all over the place, but we know this is a big deal in India. Yeah. 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 When, the whole time I was watching it, I was like, this seems very personal. Very to, personal. I'm hoping not all of India, but I'm sure a lot of people who have really strict fathers. Yeah. Uh, and I'm hoping it's not this extensive for a lot of people. I yeah. really hope, but I know it probably is for a lot. No, but it's been, there's been a theme 
throughout all of our movie watching, it started with Three Idiots. Mm -hmm. And you, it gets touched upon all the time. And it's this uh, patriarchal, domineering, loveless relationship between a lot of fathers and sons. Yeah. That's pretty sad. Breaks, um, breaks my heart. Yeah, it's, it's, it's really sad. But before we get into the subject matter, as it were, I, just on, on the technical merits alone, let's just talk about, uh, first of all, I don't know if you all can appreciate, um, you may, but for those of you who don't appreciate, what it means for an actor as young as the uh, as Rohan, uh, Rajat Barmecha, is that how you pronounce his yeah. name? Uh, for an actor, I don't know that he's the age of the character, but he's a young man who... Was he introduced? Was this his first film? It might have been. Because uh, it said introducing, and my suspicion is it's him. For someone at his age to yeah. carry a film. He did a short film in 2010. Okay. But say this is, yeah. yeah, so for a, for a relatively inexperienced actor to carry a film where you're the lead. And do it well. Yeah, and it's your story. And it's a film that has no bells and whistles. It's pretty just raw. raw. And I heard they also filmed it in like, the stupid baby said they filmed it in like their friend's backyard, some of the scenes. Okay. And so it's a very like bare bones. Very basic bare bones. When you're that young, I mean, any actor, one of the hardest things, and it's why we applaud actors so often like Nawazuddin and Irfan, because the, one of the hardest things for an actor to do is to turn off performing. Mm -hmm. Because all you, especially if you're a younger actor, when you're a, a seasoned veteran, you don't feel like you need to prove anything. Because you don't. You know you're gonna be, you're doing your work. And there's a sense of confidence. For a young actor who's getting his first leading role to not perform yeah. is, is impressive. He gave off, right when he came on the screen and uh, as it was going along, he gave off Miles Teller vibes to me. I didn't think that at the time, but I can see why you'd say that. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Uh, he looks similar, um, but he also just gave off vibes that Miles Teller, he's a really good actor. Um, if you, you don't know who that is, Whiplash. see Whiplash. Go, just go see that now. <laughs> that film's amazing. Phenomenal. <laughs> Anyways, but yeah, he so he gave off those vibes, and sometimes I feel like it's better to, I don't know if he was an actor, if they just kind of, this has happened before in old Hollywood where people go to... Um, um, like malls and pick out somebody who just fits the bill. Yeah. Uh, and sometimes that's, it works. That's actually get rise style. That was yeah. his thing to do. And it, sometimes it works. Like I, I mentioned this film a lot, The Florida Project. Mm -hmm. The lead girl in that never acted a day in her life and she's mesmerizing. Which is why it works because they're not acting. Right. They don't know. They the, don't have any bad habits yet. They don't know the <laughs> tricks. Right. Even though like tricks are bad. They, exactly. So they're not really tricks. Exactly. Uh, but like, so sometimes it's even better. And he gave off those vibes. He did. And you know who else did really well? The, the dad. Phenomenal. Phenomenal job. I don't know who this man is. I don't. I don't think we've seen him in anything else. But Brilliant. I hated him. Yep. And I was. And you're supposed to. No, I didn't right. hate exactly. That's not what I'm saying. I'm no, saying no, 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 no. Yeah, I the, hated the, the character, poster. and as you're, it's what you're supposed to do. Right. And again, like we've seen some smaller characters where uh, we've we've applauded the. They weren't even big enough to be a supporting actor, mm -hmm. and we've applauded how how well they did because it would have been so easy to just turn the character into a caricature versus making it seem like a real flesh and blood person. So you can also thank the screenplay uh, and the writing of on your and the and the collaborative team. But the acting of the dad, yeah, I believe Ronit Roy. I his name. absolutely believed that this family existed. This was a father and son with a little brother that became part of the family because his dad Got married. And that little boy was adorable. Uh, the uncle was the uncle. Oh, his name is, say it right here. Um, Ramit Kum Kapoor. Kapoor. Just uh, a great he cast. Did, he did great. Did a great job. That, that, the scene between the brothers mm -hmm. toward the end when he was telling him, don't send the little guy off to boarding school. And th that was also writing. Just great, great writing. Great direction. One of my... We mentioned this a lot. My favorite styles of directing is just let things be. It, it felt very similar to uh, like a Malalium, the Kumbology Knights, just fly in the wall. Yeah. Kind of just let it happen. And not nearly as pretty oh, when no. it didn't need to be. No, I think it made itself grittier. I think it needed to be to convey the starkness of what this young guy was living in. Because mm -hmm. when you're living in a situation like this, 
the entire spectrum of your world looks flat. Mm -hmm. You know, from his perspective, when you're living in, a, in a, a state of your life that feels hopeless and oppressed and you can't get out of it and that your dreams won't come true, that whole template of your life is, everything's flat and colorless. Uh, I, I just, there's really, I have nothing to say about the film. I thought the music was extremely yeah, it, beautiful. It just makes sense. It's uh, Amit de Trevedi. Mm -hmm. in the music for it. Yeah. So that makes sense. It does make that sense. The, uh, the, 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 the music behind it was just so fitting. And yeah. So simple. And the little guy, I, I believe that little guy yeah. the whole time. I, I believe the relationship between the two. Yeah. It, this film got you immersed in that world pretty quickly. Pretty quick. Uh, and you're like, I believe where we are right now. I believe this family. I believe these friends. Mm -hmm. Um, and it was just, it, it broke your heart in a lot of places. The fact that the dad was just like, no, you're not going to be a, a writer, which I feel like is, uh, like we say in, to India, a very personal thing. A lot of dads were like, no, you can't pursue that. There's no money in art. There's no money in acting. There's no money in writing. There's no money in yeah. whatever you want to, artistic right. that you want right. to do. Right. You have to become an engineer. Right. Or a doctor or whatever. Right. Uh, and I feel like the very that's a very personal story for a lot of people from India. Huge. Uh, and it, it is here too. Yeah. I mean, it, it's a universal story, but we know that it's a really big deal in, in India. And I, I, also, I'm quite sad that, do they not have a child protective services in India? I don't know. Because they needed to be called. Oh yeah, they needed to be called. Like, it, like my wife was saying, she watched it with us, um, and she said, if you, if a kid shows up with, um, uh, inj he's injured. Like I mm -hmm. say, he fell down the stairs. They immediately, immediately. suspect yeah. that here in the U S it was the parents that did it. And yeah. so they're, you're going to be, you're going to be interrogated yep. uh, about like what actually happened. Yep. And they're going to ask a whole bunch of different questions because they want to make sure you're not the one hurting this child. Correct. Uh, and so if there's not, I'm hoping there's something that will be, cause you can't do that to a kid. No, right it's when, a big right deal when here. that happened, when he missed out on that big business, deal yeah and he was going to get a son i was like oh god he's mm -hmm. gonna kill his son yeah and then you were like oh did he finally repent but no he didn't repent he was just i guess didn't want to get in trouble and that's why he was all he, which is why it was great writing <laughs> yeah great writing very believable and that re the, the um <laughs> i love the hypocrisy of him um uh, you know needing to beat the kid running and doing push-ups, but he smokes like a chimney and drinks like an alcoholic. <laughs> uh, but there's a, there, the, the primary message of the thing, there was a line that the, the brother, the uncle said to the dad when he said that um, every dad wants his son to grow up and be like him. I audibly said to the TV screen, no. <laughs> um, dads, <laughs> if, you're, if you're doing that, please stop. Mm. Um, that's actually the opposite of what I want. Thank you. <laughs> I, um, two things I've about, said many times. I said, I hope he's like you. <laughs> I, I, two, two things that I've wanted for my kids. And I remember this for my son as well. I remember thinking that my son might love baseball because my dad loved baseball and I loved baseball and baseball has been a deep connection for my dad and I. And I saw he was a left-hander very young. So I'm like, oh, he's a lefty. And then when he started to get tall, I'm like, he's going to be a tall left-hander. And he took to basketball first. I'm like, that's fine. And then when I introduced him to baseball, he liked it. He played Little League, but he wasn't like me as a kid saying, Dad, let's go have a catch. Let's go play stickball. Let's go play baseball. You want to watch the baseball game? I was like freaking addicted to movies and baseball, movies and baseball. Micah could take it or leave it. Mm -hmm. And for me, I didn't need him to be me and my dad. I, it was just another thing where I looked at him and went, wow, this little guy, is, <clears throat> he's his own dude. What's going to come up? What's yeah. going to be his thing? And the competitiveness too. If, if you're a dad who doesn't want your kid to exceed you, to be bigger, stronger, faster, smarter, um, happier, um, I don't understand that. I just, I don't understand that. And I also don't understand yeah, I don't the, I, I can comprehend something, which is this. I can comprehend parents who had a rough time and sacrificed and they had parents who did that 
and they have high expectations for their kids and they want the best for them. Mm -hmm. And they really believe that if they don't follow this path, it's going to suck. Mm -hmm. However, if that's not what floats the kid's boat, um, and there's a lot of parents who would disagree with this statement, I would rather my kid be poor and unsuccessful, but living the life they felt they were supposed to live and be happy. Yeah. Because uh, when all is said and done, that's what's going to matter. Yeah, I feel very blessed and that I never felt pressure to <clears throat> I go to be in anything. any different direction yeah. from any of my parents. Yeah, I have, me, I have me four too. sets, one's in the military. Uh, I mean, I, I'm sure my dad would have wished I would have went into the military. Would have loved it. Yeah, yeah. but no, I, I never felt any pressure. My, my brother, he's a theater major, so clearly they don't care what he does. <laughs> If Not just a theater major, but he likes what kind of theater, my friend? Uh, musical. musical theater. Yes, and he's that's his major, so yeah. you know that's a worthless degree. <laughs> <laughs> but they let him do it because he loves it. Yeah, and so it's it's I feel very blessed, but it, it's great writing in the fact mm. that the dad became his dad, mm. and at the beginning the kid was treating the younger kid like the dad yes, treated he him was, and then the, it was great to see him grow. And what he said at the end, he was like, I, I love my little brother who I didn't even know I had. Yeah, and I didn't see that coming. Yeah. Did, you, did you see the, the end coming? Yeah. I actually thought, you know what I thought the end was going to be? I thought, well, actually, for a while, well, I, once I knew he was leaving, I was like, he's going to come back and he's going to take him. For I didn't a while, even... I thought it was going to end like Dead Poet Society. Thank you. And if yeah. you haven't seen Dead Poet Society, we're not going to say another word. Yeah, go see it. That is exactly uh, what I thought was going to happen. Yeah, that's what I, was, I thought it was going almost the whole time. Me too. So it was, it was a nice surprise. A nice it, surprise. It didn't, but I did see once that happened, uh, I was like, he's going to take the kid as well. I love the returning of the watch. Yeah. And he did it in a way that wasn't spitting in your face. Mm -hmm. it, was a, it was a very... He was much nicer than I would have been. Much <laughs> nicer. <laughs> oh, I, I would have hit that man so many times. I loved when he hit him. Yeah. And then I loved the foot race at the end, and he can't catch him. Um, but for those, <laughs> any of you watching this, okay, I'm sure you get the same thing. I've gotten a lot of messages from stupid babies over the past year. And there's a lot of you who are out there and watch, who are living in what this movie depicts. And all I can tell you is, and I've said this over and over again to so many stupid babies who've said, I don't know what to do. I want to go in this direction. My family either totally objects or if they found out I wanted to do that, that I'd be disowned. What do I do? Or I'm just going through this hard time. I have this awful relationship. I wish I had this relationship with my dad. Um, all I can tell you to help you get through those seasons is that every season changes. And one of my favorite things to say is that even the darkest, coldest winter, no matter how dark and cold it feels, it's inevitable. That season is gonna change. It may not feel like it's gonna change, but there's gonna come an opportunity that it's gonna change. And the reality is that instrument of change is probably gonna have to be you. You're not gonna be able to wait for a circumstance to just come and be your deliverance. Like the lyrics of the song at the end, mm -hmm. it says freedom isn't just given to you. Most freedoms have to be fought for. They're not just given to you. Um, I know a particular person right now, his age, 17, who needs to become the lion, not be the cub, mm -hmm. and actually needs to say to mom and dad, I am an adult <coughs> and you need to treat me like one now. Yeah. Um, and it's, there's a way to do that. And it's like crossing a line of being respectful or not, but uh, you sometimes have to fight for your freedoms. So, yeah. yeah. Also, this is a very, I think... I think any American could watch this and get it. 100%. Like, this is one of the most digestible. Like, if we did a list, I think this would be... In, it, it's definitely in the top five. Yeah. I don't know where it would place I'd have to think. Uh, but I would, I, would, I would say it's probably the most digestible. Because it, it, there's no bad quality in it. There's no bad mm -hmm. acting in it. There's no bad writing. I think they can understand even the cultural differences. Yeah, I think the cultural differences are so minimal. I think that goes to speak to Anya Rakashiyev's writing. Yeah. Uh, he just, he, he's so good at it. And so this is just, I could recommend this to anybody, anybody. just as a film. If this wasn't one of the nominations, the submissions for the Oscars in 2010, I don't know what was <laughs> for India. I actually think this was submitted. Was this submitted? I think this was submitted, rightly so. I'd be interested to see what won over it. Because yeah. 
man, because this is a film that could win. Yeah. This is one of those that's... Um, it's a great movie. Overcoming some stereotypes in India that that a lot of people feel the pressure of. Mm -hmm. And so it's, I think it could it would have done very well. I don't know what one, so you'll have to let us know that. But phenomenal movie. Great movie. Go see it. Great uh, movie, great acting, great writing, great directing. Yeah, there's really, I can't, I'm trying to think of a nitpick and I- I don't have one. Yeah. I, I, all the kids were great. The I, only, I mean, <laughs> yeah. yeah, there's nothing I can nitpick. I, you know, which is hard to say about a film. <laughs> I would, I would love, you know, I love it when I see cinematography, like there's moments in 1917 where I went, how did they do that shot? Mm -hmm. I love it when that happens. This doesn't need that. No, I actually at like all. what the gritty yes. filter they had over it. The gritty flat. I liked it a lot. Uh, Everything so. was believable. Everything felt like it was genuinely motivated. There was no performing. Uh, I believe the relationships, it tied itself up without being a fairy tale. Yeah. Um, it's just, it's a, it's a fantastic movie. How are they drinking at 17? Because I know at least some parts of India, the drinking age is like 25. Uh, it's a good question, because he'd have been carded here in the States. Yeah. No question. Also, don't drink a drive. But... Yeah, don't drink a drive. That's Whatever. a bad thing. And, okay. and, and, Let yeah. us know what we should watch and review next. This was a phenomenal film. Uh, go on Twitter, because I do do polls there. He does do-do. And uh, dads, love your sons and your daughters. Just love your kids, would you? Unless you're Rick. And unless your kid's like Corbin, then all bets are off. <laughs>